Hi everybody, it's Gene. Today we're going to have a tech lesson on how to use the new TVs with the computers that are attached to it. So a lot of you have a lot of questions. Um, better way or the best way to go ahead is to show you how to do it. Now I do want to stress though, in every single home there are printed instructions on all of what I'm about to do. So, but on several occasions when we've had phone calls of staff saying, I don't know what to do, when we've told you to grab these, nobody seems to know anything about them or where they're at. So, uh, if you happen to know where they're at, please post them where they are readily available for everybody, because uh, my guess is that people are going to use them until they become acquainted with the entire system. So, first things right off the bat, new TVs. Uh, and also, part of the system is the CPU. All right, they all look like this. They're all small microcomputers. And of course, we have the mouse and the keyboard. And, oh, looks like this one. Uh, also has the webcam, which looks like it fell. There we go. But anyway, so when you first turn on your TV, you might get this that says that there's no signal. Uh, or it might be on cable and you need to go to the computer. Or it might be on the computer and you want to go back to cable so to watch TV. So how do you change this? It's all with the TV remote. You need the TV remote. This is a Vizio TV and this is a Vizio remote. So on these remotes, and every house is, and every remote is a little bit different. So on this remote, it's called the input. On other remotes, it's called source. And if you have one of the fancy new LG ones, like I think Oak uh, has a fancy remote for the LGs, in the center down here, there's a button in the center that has a, what looks like a little plug that you would plug into the back of a TV. And that is the input slash source button. So that's what you want to press. So we're going to press the input button and then we're given all kinds of choices. The one we want, if you want to watch TV, if you want to watch cable, you're going to go to the one marked cable or this case cable TV. Again, each TV is going to be a little bit different. Each label is going to be a little bit different. So, but look for the one that says cable or cable TV or just TV, right? So that's if you want to watch cable. Now, with this remote, you can adjust the volume, but I don't. Once you've changed the input, you can put this remote away. You are now done. What you're going to want now is you're going to want your cable remote, your Comcast cable remote. There you can go through your guide. There you can go through um, all your different channels and go up and down. And you can also control the volume with your Comcast cable remote. So that's for cable TV. Now let's say you want to do something on the computer. Say you want to go to Netflix or you want to go to Disney Channel or you want to check your email or you want to go to YouTube, anything else that you would use the computer for. Again, we're going to go back to our TV remote. We're going to find that input or source button. We're going to press that again. And this time we're going to look for something that says computer, computer. So on that one, Let's see. All right. So we're going to go to computer and you'll notice when I clicked on it, if we wait, no signal. If that ever happens to you, then we need to go to your CPU, the little microcomputer. Because what that tells me is that if I'm on computer, which I know I'm on and there's no signal, it means that the computer is not on. So we're going to go down here and we're just going to press the power button. And all of a sudden I can already tell there's a second green light and it's flashing really fast. It means it's booting and here we have our check-in screen for the computer which is now operating through our TV. All right. So now our whole setup is just like your computer at home, just like your laptop, just like your desk computer at home. So it operates the same. Now that I've switched my inputs to the computer, I no longer need this remote. This is where a lot of people are getting really confused. They start to try to navigate 
through this remote. No, this is just for the TV. We are now on the computer. So I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna to move to my mouse. Now this one's asking me for a password. If that happens to you, the password is always open door one, two, three, four. Now it brings you up a number here that's associated with a cell phone. So it's asking you for all this other good stuff. You don't really need that. So we're gonna click on reminder later. This one's not been on for a while, so that's why it's walking us through that. But sometimes that happens. If the computer's been shut down, or if the power's been out, or anything else like that, the computer's got to reboot. And every single time it does that, it will probably ask you for a password. Sometimes they might even ask you for a PIN number. If that happens, all the pins, all the passwords, open door, one, two, three, four, all lowercase, uh, is the password to get into the computer. Or if it's pinned, it's 3648. 3648. So now we have our desktop on our screen. So this will get us anywhere that we want to go. Some of you will have uh, and it really depends on the TV. So every TV's uh, different, smart TV is a little bit different. This one uh, doesn't have Netflix or uh, Disney, uh, but others do. You can go straight to those if that's where you wanna go. But if you don't see the N for Netflix or the D for Disney, go to the Microsoft Edge here, double click on that. That is our browser. So now it's just like Google. If you think about it, you know how you, when you search for Google and it's also got all like your home pages, exact same set, exact same thing. Microsoft Edge does that exact same stuff. So here we know we have Microsoft Edge now open. Now we can search in our search engine. If you guys are researching something for a class, if you wanna know about bumblebees, you can type in bumblebees and it'll give you all the information on bumblebees and you just click on the one. But remember, we're using our mouse now. This is a computer now. But no, I wanna to go to Disney. Say we wanna watch a Disney movie. So I just clicked on Disney, which is over in my saved favorites. And it's gonna take me into Click into the house where I'm at. It doesn't really matter which one you're looking at. Oh, this one's not been shut down for quite some, or it's been shut down for quite some time, but that's okay. So I had to log out of that stuff because it was wanting me to do some weird stuff. If that happens, just log out. And we're gonna log back in, okay? So this is log in. It's asking for our email. Now depending on your house that you're at is depending on which account you're on. So this one, we're gonna use Bard's account. And it's just her email. And the passwords are already saved in here. I did that on all of the computers. But if not, go to your text sheet. It lists what the passwords are for those accounts. Notice here that the different houses are already up here. Here, I'm at Hickory. So we're gonna choose Hickory. But it really doesn't matter which one you're on. You just can't be, multiple houses can't be on the same one at the same time. So now we can watch any of the movies that we want for Disney. Same thing if I wanted to go to Netflix. It's gonna ask me who I am. Well, I'm Chestnut Hickory. So I'm gonna go there, boom, Netflix is already up. Again, because I entered in that information, it's already saved. You shouldn't have to type in anything. But if you do, all of that information is in the text sheets. 
So you'll also notice, in addition to Disney and Netflix, there's YouTube. You can go to YouTube and watch your favorite YouTube videos. Or this is the one where we use uh, the webcam and the virtual classes that we have scheduled. So this is where you go to the email or the Yahoo email. So here's Hickory. I'm gonna sign in. It's asking me for my password. It's again, it's already saved. So, but if you need to manually enter it again for whatever reason, because sometimes they get a little finicky, or if they've been, again, shut down for a long period of time, you may have to re-enter it. It's in the text sheets, okay? So now I know that it's here. I don't wanna try any of that good stuff. So I'm going to go to my inbox, but Hickory doesn't have anything because we're not sending anything to Hickory because we don't have anybody here. But if there is a class that's scheduled and I'm invited to it, say I'm at Oak and I wanna go to my sign language class, that happens. So when I open the email for Oak, I'm gonna have an email from Hannah or whoever the instructor is most likely is going to be Hannah, and it's going to say ASL class on this date at this time. I'm going to click on that email. Inside that email is going to be a blue link to the Zoom class. You click on that, everything starts automatically, and your webcam starts right up too. And that's how you get into your Zoom classes. Really quickly, we're just going to review. I'm gonna to go to the Yahoo email up here. I'm clicking on that. I'll log in if I have to. I'm gonna find the email that I need, click on that, and then the body of the email is going to be the blue hyperlink to that Zoom class. I'm gonna click on that blue link and everything should start automatically. Now let's talk a little bit about problem solving. Okay, if by chance your webcam doesn't automatically click in when you click on that, or for some reason that the webcam is not operational, first thing I want you to do is to go to the back of the CPU, find a wire that the webcam is, unplug it, wait 30 seconds, and plug it back in. It will reboot, and hopefully that's all it's really going to need. Nothing is fail safe, these are all electronics and sometimes things just need to be unplugged and plugged back in. Same thing if you go to switch to the computer and for some reason the computer is frozen or you get a screen that doesn't wanna move, the best thing to do is to find the power cord for that CPU, for that microcomputer, unplug it, wait 30 seconds, and plug it back in and start the process all over again, okay? So, I hope that helps you. Um, well, one more thing, when you're all done, when you're all done with the computer and you no longer need anything on the computer and you want to go back to cable, let's think about our steps, our processes again. I can go ahead and close out everything on the computer, just X out like you always do. Once I'm back to this screen, I don't need to shut the computer down. You can leave the computer on. It's not going to hurt it but I'm gonna grab the TV remote once more. And just like before, I'm gonna find my input button. I find my input button, and I wanna go back to the one that says, on this one, cable TV. Boom, back to Matilda. Okay, so I hope that helps. If not, that's what these little sheets are for, okay? If you can't find these, let us know. We'll get you an extra copy. All right, guys. I hope that helps. Thanks for listening.